The following is a presentation of TFNN. The P Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And welcome all to another exciting edition of the Power Trading Hour with me, your humble, lovable, squeezably soft host. As always, we like to come to you this time. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. So what do we have today? Well, it's options expiration, not much movement after the uh, open. A little higher. I thought maybe they just try to pin it at 3,100 on the S&P cash. Uh, looks to me eh, a little bit pusher. I wouldn't be surprised to see us give up five or six points into the close. Uh, volume so far today, uh, fairly tepid. Uh, generally, if you don't get a lot of action on... Thursday, you get that action today. It's been rather mute after the first, of course, little bit of the open. Uh, but uh, 3.7 billion shares, which is kind of light, uh, didn't have a lot of volume yesterday for options expiration. So yeah, we'll have to keep a close eye on it. Sometimes you get uh, a lot of juice the last 30 minutes of the day. But um, to see where, for the most part, as we've been talking about it, the thing that uh, has bothered me about being short wasn't the fact that most of the technicals look horrible. It was the stocks that probably shouldn't be shorted, like Apple, Microsoft, um, and others, were being heavily shorted, which almost always makes me think that the market's not going down. Um, or if it's going down, probably not a lot. I always like it when shorts give up, uh, and then you almost always see a rapid descent that makes it worth the money of being short. So uh, just not a lot of cash to the upside. Um, I mean, yesterday the option market makers were thinking maybe a point higher into Christmas. Um, again, I, it's not going to be lost on anybody, but certainly I suspect that they're trying to hold this market up as long as they can. Uh, the big men of Wall Street are generally paid uh, for Christmas bonuses with the closing price at the end of November. Sometimes those bonuses don't get paid out until January, but basically the cutoff date for about 80% of people on Wall Street for Christmas bonuses, performance bonuses, uh, are the end of November. Some of them actually get the end of October. Uh, the rest, uh, the majority, though, I think it's the end of November. So generally, you don't see a lot of juice uh, and movement in December's. Uh, last year was kind of a one-off, but certainly uh, it sold horribly into the 24th, 25th, and 26th before it started to run. Um, we were pretty much heavily long, I think, by the 20th. 5th or 26th in the newsletter, uh, caught all of that. And one of the features in the news daily newsletter is the uh, sector oscillators. Uh, they were, well, they've done exceedingly well at finding all the lows. I continue to work on a lot of stuff to find the highs. Much, much tougher to be uh, shorting the highs because uh, euphoria, uh, not a lot of logic in it. Fear Man, that's something that permeates uh, the body and uh, almost always a very good signal at lows. Uh, generally not that uh, uh, more problematic to find out when manic people have decided to give up. Uh, generally it is not with a bang but a whimper, uh, and it is problematic. Uh, still, I've still got one position. I was looking at another one. Um, I'm just waiting for the everything to kind of settle out on it. Maybe you know, Monday we'll see if uh, the uh, bounce in uh, a couple of what I'm looking at uh, hold. But again, I'm going to be looking a lot more toward the uh, commodity side of the markets, mostly uh, just because when 
uh, markets tend to be very narrowly traded or s small trading ranges and in actually small, even small up or down movements. Um, they tend to want to look at commodities a lot tougher. I don't know if people just leave uh, the equities business uh, and look for action in commodities because there isn't a whole lot. Uh, but certainly it does end up playing out that way. Don't know the actual reason we can surmise, but I don't think we can prove. Anyway, um, took some shots mostly because uh, the uh, charts showed horrible internals in the market. It did not matter. A handful of uh, stocks is keeping this market up and pushing it a little higher. Um, we'll talk about uh, earnings after the bell last night and how they're pushing it. Of course, the biggest thing is uh, that we're going to be uh, six days less uh, from Thanksgiving's Black Friday to Christmas this year. Comparisons are going to be very, very tough in the uh, retail world um, and kind of unsure how that's going to play out. We in the den uh, just before uh, the end of four o'clock where I was going through earnings. We've got a ton of retail uh, coming out next week. None of them look all that strong. Uh, but again, uh, most a lot of them are very, very short, uh, shorted. And if they just come in okay, it uh, could be a lot of people uh, covering before the end of the year, even though the, the stock price is probably somewhere around a fair value at the time. Um, just shortly, those stocks tend to get pushed uh, with lighter volume starting about the second week of December to work on it. You can give me a call at 877-927-6648. You can email me at path at tfnn.com. And of course, you can always put a message in the den. Uh, so what else do we have right here? Well, um, one of the reasons we talked about taking uh, uh, a little bit more than five bucks off the table in our China short yesterday, mostly because um, it finally looks like the Fed has thrown enough um, gasoline on the fire to keep the TLT uh, hovering around. It's basically flat on the day uh, so far, but they got it back above that 136.50, which is kind of the low end of that trading range. Doesn't look like it's going to go a lot higher. Uh, the question is, uh, it certainly looks like the bulk of the weakness is in Asia. The question is, uh, are they doing the same thing over there to paper over any uh, gaping uh, issues in the market? Um, you always think that China is going to have its 1929 moment. Just don't know where. Things may be okay over here, but still pull back uh, if China does have some kind of systemic risk. Uh, you got to know that it's a house of cards. Everybody's lying to everybody. Uh, just wonder when the music is going to stop. Anyway, uh, we'll be back in a minute. We'll uh, talk a little bit about uh, history. And then we'll move on to a lot of charts today. So we can start looking into next week and uh, through the end of the month to see if there's anything out here that's worth playing. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. 
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. On this day in 1971, an advertisement in the magazine Electronic News announces the Intel 4004, 4004, 4 with two zeros and a 4. The first commercially available microprocessor, the 4004, was primarily used in calculators, the first being the Buscom 141-PF. In fact, it was the Buscom that actually developed the design of what would become the Intel 4004. Buscom approached Intel to help them finalize the design and max, uh, manufacture their calculator engine. It would be a scant uh, six or seven years uh, before I would buy a Altair 80. Eight, yeah, no, 8008 uh, that had an 8080 processor in it, uh, the forerunner to the uh, X um, Intel 32-bit uh, processor design that would come out for the PC 16 and 32-bit uh, processors of the uh, 1980s and 90s. Um, so I was pretty much uh, familiar with at least the big brother to this particular processor. Uh, they weren't exciting by any stretch of the imagination today. But uh, at the time, pretty groundbreaking. And, of course, uh, you could have never had a calculator that ran off of batteries before this. Uh, everything drew, drew so much power. Uh, that it would have lasted all of about five minutes. So uh, why they were a little bit bigger and clunkier than today, you could actually, if you were an engineer, put one in your pocket. And, of course, uh, by the mid-1975, 1978 range, uh, slide rules kind of starting to slide. By 1980, a lot of the new Texas Instrument uh, kind of calculators were coming out. Uh, with even graphing functionality in the LCDs. And that kind of put an end to that old business. Of course, one of the biggest entries in that uh, calculator business was Commodore Business Machines. A maker of typewriters was looking for something uh, to enhance its business, looked at some of these uh, processors available uh, for 
uh, using calculators, decided it on a 6502 uh, and made a Commodore 64 out of it. Uh, the biggest and best selling computer of all time. I don't think they're ever going to get to the kind of numbers that they had in a Commodore 64 ever again, uh, mostly because of the cost and the and just people were doing what they do now. Of course, we're looking at big numbers in game machines, which really is kind of why you don't see those again. On this day in 1971, uh, the uh, big move to semiconductors really had started, uh, or was starting. I guess that would be a better way to describe it. Uh, after the bell last night, AMAT, uh, says that uh, there's a lot of spending coming out uh, for the new smaller size dies next year. Uh, that means that uh, the current semiconductor companies may have higher expenses. We'll see in the next round of earnings whether or not uh, the investors like that part of it. Uh, but uh, being able to uh, pop this one uh, also has a great deal to do, like I said, uh, in way too many shorts. Uh, for the uh, economics, um, you know, you had a decent shorting the last few days, um, and it wasn't that bad. It, or, I mean, it wasn't the, that horrible or that many shorts, uh, but there were plenty for earnings, which basically came in line with just a tad better guidance. Uh, but uh, at this moment, uh, the uh, market's not looking at anything half full for the most part. They're looking for, oh, is it full or did you just take one sip out of the glass? They're, it's pretty euphoric in the way that earnings are coming in, but I have a feeling that is because of a great deal. Uh, far too many people shorting the stocks that you know may roll over here in another couple of weeks. Uh, but uh, eh, kind of tough to see that. Uh, the other uh, big uh, news of the night was NVDA. Is that right? Yeah, NVIDIA. Uh, this one, man, were they uh, pounding on trying to keep this up last night and today. They sent everybody and their dog out to make sure this went higher. Uh, again, uh, Cisco um, didn't know if they would say uh, the truth this quarter. NVIDIA was one of these things, too, where you knew from outside, let me put it this way, I knew from outside sources that both Cisco and NVIDIA should probably be a little bit weaker uh, on the day uh, when earnings came out. Uh, for NVIDIA, it was certainly uh, what we thought of, about 55% of the business uh, and revenues and income all come from video cards, the rest of it from a variety of other sources, but it's more than half of everything they do. They pretty much have about 70% of the games market. Uh, AMD with their cards had a lot of business in video cards with uh, the Bitcoin mining business. That still isn't anywhere uh, close uh, to what it was. Uh, the, the Economics basically say that you need to have, you start making money at about $8,500 on Bitcoin. I don't think that's going to change anytime soon. Um, NVIDIA and AMD both came back as a great deal of those uh, companies that got involved in Bitcoin uh, had to liquidate a lot of those video cards uh, that were being used for Bitcoin mining. So there was kind of a, a tough year there. So uh, NVIDIA, uh, AMD, both kind of coming out uh, earlier this year on it. Uh, but uh, kind of interesting to see people that should have known better, uh, big analysts uh, spouting on TV about how uh, Bitcoin mining was coming back. I see absolutely no evidence that that is true. And certainly even when it was at its height, NVIDIA only had about 20% of the business of Bitcoin mining. 80% uh, of that was from AMD. Uh, let's take a quick look at that. Um, well, you could have a little something out here on $39.37, the high of today. Uh, again, everybody was shorting the living daylights out of this stock. Um, if you look down here on the bottom, 
where I've got my pointer. That black part is the percentage that was uh, sold short yesterday and the day before. Uh, but, you know, it's been, this is, this thing's being shorted to the tune of about 30% and actually almost 40% uh, on Tuesday. Um, so a lot of people were on the wrong side of this going uh, into the, S, uh, the earnings of others like AMD. Uh, but uh, again, try to stay away from highly shorted stocks. Uh, what was it? Uh, yeah, it's not as bad as you would think. About three days to cover. It's still far too many shorts in AMD. We need those shorts to give up before the thing will pop out. We'll be back in a minute. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Up 18 points on the S&P 5, Dow 30, up 161, NASDAQ up 52. Uh, the Russell 2000 up uh, just under 8 at... Uh, 15.96 and a half. Crude oil up 99 cents. Again, the uh, Baker Hughes numbers came in uh, rather bullish. Uh, and uh, I think uh, at least we probably have some kind of floor under crude until those numbers start uh, changing. But uh, at some point, you have to give up production. And the best, uh, best thing for a low price is a low price. 
Uh, we continue to see rigs being taken off um, that are probably not the most economic uh, and the ones with cheaper cost of production uh, leaving out there or live, living. Uh, what else do we have uh, when we take a quick look? Uh, let's take a look at this. Uh, as we said, oil's up 97 cents for West Texas. Natural gas up a nickel. Uh, gold down about $6.70. Silver off about 11 cents. Uh, copper still stuck in that uh, trading range around $2.63. Uh, natural gas eh, up a nickel. But again, this thing's kind of been stuck in that trading range. Uh, the best thing uh, that you can say for natural gas is that the rig count is coming down. You might be able, if they if they close the right rigs, you might be able to get a little bit of movement in natural gas. I do not see a future this year where natural gas goes over four bucks. Still a big move, but uh, too many people telling me about uh, natural gas going to ten bucks or fifteen bucks. That always makes me think that. Uh, there are way too many people, way too bullish on natural gas. I think uh, eh, it'd probably be fairly conservative. Uh, if that price on crude goes higher, you're going to have those uh, wells open back up, and the price of natural gas will fall fairly quickly. Um, uh, as we said, uh, volume fairly light. We still only have 4 billion shares on the day. That's an expiration day and off a day where the volume uh, was well uh, short of what we were or what you think you should look for uh, in uh, attacking new highs in the market. Uh, but uh, yeah, we shall see. As I said, I wouldn't be surprised to sell off five, maybe 10 points before the end of the day. Um, but uh, yeah, there's no guarantee in it. And I don't see a lot of evidence yet. Just far too many people short just at the moment. Um, and that may be enough to keep the market higher for just a little while longer. Um, one of the other things that I dislike, uh, like I said, uh, covered my short position in China yesterday for a nice profit. Uh, but one of the problems uh, was or is uh, that the Fed may be able to uh, pull one out of the fire, so to speak. Uh, they've at least got the downside uh, quelch for the short term of the VNQ. This one is the one that rotated First, if we're going to have some downside before the end of the year, this may get up another 50 cents or a buck. Of course, the big news, the reason why this bounced was the TLT. Uh, this thing did get back down, uh, blew out the lows, did so on more volume. Not that much more, but enough that makes you think that we're going to get a, at least one more retest of 134.45, which is the November 7th low. So if we see that, you gapped up, you kind of kind of gone a couple of sideways moves. Uh, could this get back up to 140? It could. That would be a better bet if we're looking for another big leg down, maybe even 141, 68. Maybe it comes up there and hovers around here for a while before it gets ready to continue a move down. And of course, uh, the overnight repo business is uh, what this thing is all about. Um, it started off in September. Uh, by October, it became problematic. Uh, you got back up to 146.03 on October 4th, uh, and then a wholesale selling uh, down to this November 7th low, a little bit of bounce here. But again, um, this does look like nothing more than a bounce and a downtrend. Uh, what we are hoping for is this thing to get back up to 141.68, which would be a nice move uh, back out and sideways. So what else do we have? Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, okay. Um, oh, what did we want to look at? Had a few things out here. We looked at DLT. We looked at that. Um, question about docu. Take a quick look at that for Jim from Ontario. I don't know if that's Ontario. Uh, Canada or Ontario uh, in California, and maybe you'll let me know. Uh, anyway, uh, DocuSign, um, you know, when you look at this, I want to cringe, uh, mostly just because 
there is no volume uh, since this gap higher back on the 6th of September. Uh, let's see what earnings are next due. December 5th. So, yeah, could this hang out another couple of weeks higher? Um, but certainly, when you look at this, uh, especially last week or so in the volume, um, this just looks very, very tough on this one. Uh, but you know what? Kind of the whole market, uh, when we look at that kind of stuff. Uh, to, to, to what else do we have? Uh, question about the IBB. Take a quick look at that. Did I put it in there correct? Uh, one extra B. So it's not going to find anything. Uh, you're back up to the July 3rd high that had 2 million shares. You got about 1.3 million shares now. You had about 1.6 million shares on the 8th. And you had about 2.1 million shares, uh, which didn't get anywhere. Well, a couple bucks shy of the high. 2.2 million shares. But again, what you were looking for is these hits uh, close to the previous high at 110.63. And again, 1.3 million shares compared to 2 million shares. You've got an hour left in the day, but volume has been moving around rather slowly. Uh, to, to what else do we have? Question about Adobe ADBE. A-D-B-E, if you can type correctly, Adobe. To do, yeah, uh, I see what you're looking at. Uh, you're going in two and a half million shares with yeah, maybe one and a half million shares so far today. So you want to see how this works out over time. Um, if you're looking for, you know, a nice trading range, uh, could this go all the way up into the Christmas and retest 313 uh, on much lighter volume and set up kind of trapdoor selling at the first of the year? That'd be one scenario. The other one is that this is the retrace uh, that you're going to get. And today is a low volume spike back into that August 9th high at 298.27. That had two and a half million shares. Again, you've got 1.3 million shares right now. So again, very light volumes. Uh, you know, are you ever going to get the retrace? Well, you hope you do, because if you don't, and it drags like this all the way up into Christmas, generally that means some very happy selling at the beginning of the year. You want to uh, let some of that tension out now with some retraces. We'll be back in a minute. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, 
educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. And we'll be back. Um, someone brought up Roku. Um, certainly back to this heavy day down, which is uh, September 10th. Came down with about 35 million shares. Uh, we're up back up into about 22 million shares. Uh, talked to uh, Tom O'Brien about this uh, in the uh, Tech Insider half hour, last half of his show uh, coming up here in about 45 minutes. Uh, but I had something happen to me on my Roku device. Maybe other people had the same thing. Um, and uh, Tom made a comment about it last week, about the way we should think about it, and uh, thinking that uh, it does seem um, like the way we do. So we'll talk to him about it a little bit, but uh, very interesting. Uh, what else do we have uh, going on here? We will look at it. Oh, uh, what else are we gonna talk about? Um, why a company thinks it's going to corner the weather business, if you believe that. Somebody does actually believe they're going, to, uh, they're going to corner the weather business. And it may not be who you think it is. Doesn't that sound like one of those uh, National Enquirer ads? And you may not think who you, you think it is. That you might think that it's who it is. That it's not. Anyway, just a thought. Uh, anyway, uh, at the bottom of next hour. Okay, so what else do we have? Still light volume um, in the markets, uh, up 18 points on the S&P cash. Again, kind of looks like a, just barely holding up. Uh, at least you're not seeing a lot of volume come in. Uh, just now over a little bit of 4 billion shares. So uh, one more push higher and not that much juice. Uh, any question about what's going on in the dollar? Uh, it's down a little bit, uh, down 15 cents, but uh, I don't see a whole lot um, that says that uh, the end is nigh for the dollar, but eh, you're down that much. It's been mostly for the last uh, trading day sold off, but I don't know if that matters so much. Again, that may be more of an issue with the Fed uh, and their levers and pulleys behind the curtain. Uh, to any other extent. Uh, do, 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 okay. Uh, okay. Do, 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 do. <laughs> um, okay. What else do we have? Oh, I'm just looking at a few other things out here uh, that we have. Uh, people asking about a uh, question about keys. K E Y S. Uh, they make a lot of test equipment. Um, again, like the whole market uh, for a lot of these tech stocks, there's a handful that didn't, but a lot of them, like this one, uh, look very dangerous at this point. Uh, you've had what, about two weeks of up move in key sites without really any specific 
good signs of strength. Um, it's still in a try. It's still in an up trend. No sign to pull the trigger yet. But again, when you get with this kind of light volume, you're never really sure what is going to be uh, the opposite side of it. Um, and again, as long as people are starting to develop stuff for 5G, Keysight will probably be doing extremely well. Um, and of course, uh, mostly infrastructure. When this thing starts to move south, then that probably means that the uh, big money is going to be made uh, in uh, other areas of that technology, like the people actually making the phones, a lot of other stuff. So I have a feeling when you see Apple advertising 5G phones, that's going to change a great deal of it. Um, and probably this one uh, will come back to some kind of uh, a decent value over time. I think uh, right now, it's nothing but blue sky after 5G's been out for a year or so. Uh, could this easily come back to 55? I think you're going to find uh, that this is going to hit a high. Uh, once you buy these machines, uh, the issue isn't whether or not you need to buy a lot more. Uh, the stuff is expensive. Just the little probes and stuff you buy are 20 grand. So it's a great business on the way up. Uh, it is also problematic for any kind of uh, pullback uh, in that business. Western Digital uh, continues to try to find 50 bucks as a home. Um, this and uh, STX, both are trying to make the transition. Uh, Seagate a lot easier. Uh, they bought a memory company uh, up front. Western Digital paying higher premiums. Uh, it's going to be problematic. I just don't see how either one of these guys makes it long term. Seagate is the stronger of the two. Western Digital still has uh, always the issue of, you know, being one earnings call away from being back down to 35 bucks, and then probably years of selling like Sears or Kmart or all the rest of them, unless they come up with some kind of technology for memory that no one else has. And, there's no sign that these guys are spending in the CapEx area that would make you think that they are going to have one big movement. Uh, really, uh, these guys are going to be sold out for memory producers, and anybody that can't get in and have their own fab for making their own products probably going to pay too much for memory, and it will be very tough for them to ever make a living in that business. Uh, to, 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 okay, what else do we have out here? Question about Microsoft. Keep those cards and letters coming. So Joe wants to know about Microsoft. So let's take a look at that. Um, again, just everybody miserably short these leaders. I don't understand. Um, you don't want to short companies that have lots of cash and are making lots of money. They will eventually pull back, but they won't be the first to pull back. They will probably be the last to pull back. And they'll probably, uh, eventually, at one point, they'll be the last guy that buys uh, 10 shares of the stock at the very high, and you get a very nice pullback in it. But uh, the question is, do you see anything in it other than light volume? And the answer is nothing that bucks the trend. You've got three gaps back to 132. Whenever this thing does kind of start moving back, I suspect that that 132 is the next good level to probably buy uh, the stock and long-term support. Uh, it's just been going up on light volume for far too long. Um, unfortunately, the markets are kind of like a big rubber band, and that is you can stretch it, you can stretch it, you can stretch it. Eventually, it's going to break, and when it does, it's generally fairly painful. Uh, until then, it's all fun and games until someone loses an eye. Uh, do, 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 do. Um, okay. Uh, what else do we have that we want to look at here? Um, let's do this. Oh, we're going to the break anyway. We've got one segment left. We'll be back with Tom O'Brien at uh, 3.30. We'll be talking about technology. have some interesting ideas. Uh, a lot of people have been asking me what a rather large company is planning to do. And we kind of hear a little bit more about that this week. Um, anyway, we've got one more segment. If you really hurry... And don't wait. 
Right now, call 877-927-6648. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term Term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Basil Chapman has just announced a live 90-minute webinar he'll be conducting for subscribers to his daily trading newsletter, The Opening Call, which will be taking place Tuesday, November 19th from 5 till 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time, titled A Comprehensive Review of the Chapman Wave Techniques and Market Outlook Ahead for 2020. This is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial to The Opening Call while gaining access to Basil's live subscriber event taking place later this month. With some stock picks up 15 to 30% this year alone, Basil will review many of the Chapman Wave techniques that helped in their successful analysis, as well as providing the sectors and stocks that he thinks will be of importance heading into 2020. For all the details, check out the opening call on the front page of TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. And a uh, couple of questions coming in. Take a look at the bigger uh, leaders in F. LX uh, on this one. And again, eh, could this make it back up to 305? I think that's where you would want to look at it before you would think about shorting it. Uh, but certainly, there are no moats in video streaming. It's all about content. Uh, Netflix may have made a couple of of uh, errors in long-term judgment. I don't know if they could have ever avoided it. Uh, but certainly putting all the money over the last couple of years, uh, and especially 18 months, in uh, content for specialized countries that uh, isn't usable uh, in the English-speaking side of the business may be problematic. And that was really where they started uh, having issues in the last earnings call, um, where really kind of reversed and it's come back down and gone sideways. But uh, no real change on what they're doing. Um, I think a lot of people on Wall Street are thinking, well, you know what, maybe the heyday of being able to be the monopoly in town is over. Uh, but uh, yeah, could you get one more push back up to 308? Um, question is whether or not people are going to be able to actually. Um, 
do what they want to do, which has been kind of uh, subscribing for a month and then not subscribing as soon as they binge watch whatever they want to watch. Um, they're going to try to split that stuff over several months. I don't know what stops you from watching the first uh, or waiting until all of them are on Netflix and then watching it. I guess if you have to watch it today, maybe that's it. But uh, I don't think that goes very far. But we'll talk about uh, this and many other things with Tom O'Brien at 3.30. In the meantime, sell when you can, not when you have to. We will see you here Monday. Same bat channel, same bat time.